Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is a video tutorial for the new Boston. Now in the last tutorial we looked at the get and post HTTP requests in jQuery. Now there's a few additional things you can do to actually create a uh, better working and uh, you know more uh, flowing script I guess. Okay, so we have some callback functions, additional callback functions uh, that we can append onto the end of our request. So we have our post dot, uh, po dollar sign dot post here. So we have our HTTP request in place. Now, what happens if we receive an error? Now, if we receive an error uh, in this at all, for any reason, for example, reverse doesn't exist, or you know something's gone wrong, we can actually bind onto the end um, uh, some um, checks. Now we have three checks that we can complete and that is success, complete and error. So for example, let's go ahead and try error. I'm just gonna use at the end of this um, here, uh, you'll notice that um, it starts here where my text editor has highlighted it red and ends here. So this is really after the post initial post request. Um, we can set another callback function. So function, again, we uh, create a function inside of here and then we have some curly brackets. I'm gonna bring this down and if there is an error, I'm just gonna alert to the user an error. So, um, an error occurred, okay? So you don't obviously don't have to have an alert. You can do absolutely anything with this. Uh, you could put some data into this feedback, just say error occurred. In fact, I will think we probably do that now. That's probably better feedback.text an error occurred. Okay, so if we have an error, we are using a callback function to put the text an error occurred inside the feedback div. So let's go ahead and test our script. Again, Alex says hello. That will just be uh, Alex says hello. Now what happens if, for example, our file doesn't exist? Well, let's go ahead and rename it. Let's go over to PHP. Remember our file is called reverse.php uh, that we've called just here. So let's go ahead and rename that to reverse1.php. Okay, so let's go ahead into our browser. Let's press enter. Let's go ahead and type my name and a little message again. And we click go. Now we get an error has occurred, error message being returned to us. The reason that there's an error is because this file doesn't exist um, and this error will be fed back for a variety of other um, reasons as well, depending. Okay, so let's rename our uh, file back the way it was. Um, and I'm gonna go through some other, um, you know, callback functions we can use. So we also have dot .complete. Um, and this is a callback function to run when the uh, request is complete. So let's go ahead and for this, we'll just alert. In fact, we'll create uh, another div just under this one. And we'll call this messages. Okay, so back into ajax.js, we'll put this here as messages. So if there's an error, we have um, a request, a um, some text going to there. Now if the uh, function or if the post request is complete, we can again put a message into messages. So dot text request complete. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, press refresh. Have Alex and hello. Click go, request complete and Alex says hello. So now that's telling us that the request is complete. Okay, we also have dot success. Now this is only run if uh, the current operation is uh, successful. Now if we look at the difference here, we could uh, say get rid of that now and go ahead and rename our PHP file again. So let's go ahead into our PHP directory and go ahead and rename reverse. Okay, I'm also going to use this and say append uh, rather than text. Uh, that just makes it easier to see each request um, in total. So let's go ahead and run this. And 
click go. Okay, so you'll notice that we have a request complete, but we also have an error occurred. Now that's the difference between complete and the success uh, callback, which we're going to write in a moment. Successful only success will only be returned if the um, if the operation is uh, obviously a success, if everything's uh, gone to plan and we've re returned some data and the file exists, blah blah blah. Complete will always happen as long as this. Um, post request this HTTP request has been completed so we can go ahead and we can add on a success callback function as well so inside here we create a function and we pull that down and we can go ahead and copy and paste this into here and this will be messages dot append request successful okay so now when we return here and we click go again, you'll see that we have, it's appended it on, uh, but we have an error occurred and request complete. However, we don't have a success message. So now let's go ahead and go back to our PHP directory, rename our file back again. So we have the, um, the correct file being uh, called. Now the uh, callback functions that will be returned our request complete and request successful. We don't have an error. The request, remember, always completes. Um, well, almost always completes. And the request um, will be successful because we already know it works. So let's go ahead and test that out and we'll see them two messages appear. Okay, so we've got re request successful and request complete. So why is this useful? Well, if we have an error, for example, we might want to log this error. We might want to go on and display um, a message to the user to say there was an error retrieving your account information. Uh, an excellent example is uh, Twitter. Twitter has um, a system in place that when the loading point is taking too long, it tells you that tweets are taking too long to load. Um, so. Um, this wouldn't really have anything to do with the error part of this, um, but it does um, give a good example of how if there is an error, for example, if you know something wrong was returned um, or if the file didn't exist, you can alert the user rather than nothing happening or displaying them with a long error inside of the page. Okay, so these are the callback functions that you can use on either the post or the get HTTP request in jQuery.